went on to work for the Jet Propulsion Laboratory for nine years, creating websites that delivered employee services. She is currently employed at the California Institute of Technology in various documentation capacities. Her other work includes a children's web story about Mars Pathfinder called The Little Rock on Mars, and a variety of other stories that can be found on her website, suekents.com. Please join me in welcoming Sue Kent. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, my name is Sue Kent, and my book is called More Plutos, as Kelly said. It's an astrologer's guide to the dwarf planets recently discovered in the Kuiper Belt, which is the area beyond Neptune. My book is, introduces 11 exciting new celestial bodies and shows how each one has distinct and valuable meanings when added to astrological birth charts and event charts. <coughs> While the book is best appreciated if you have this astrological background, those with no such background have told me that they never le nevertheless enjoyed reading about these fascinating new worlds, how they were discovered, and their unusual mythologies. Especially interesting are the stories of the many celebrities and historical personages that I use to illustrate each planet's significance. I chose the title More Plutos to underline how key these new discoveries are for astrology. All of them, as I said, orbit in and around the Kuiper Belt, which is where Pluto is. Eris, the largest, is about as big as Pluto, and two others, Maki Maki and Haumea, are third and fourth behind them. Since astrologers know how vital Pluto is in their chart work, what I'm saying in effect is, you know how indispensable you find Pluto? Well, guess what? There are more Plutos. You need to try these out and see they too are indispensable. Now everyone here today is not into astrology. So I'm not going to get into much of the specifics of my book, but I thought I'd explain how I came to write it. I first came across astrology when I graduated college and I was looking to continue studying symbolism literature. During my senior year, I'd fallen in love with Shakespeare, especially after a book I read showed me the depth of symbolism found in his plays. As I looked around for a symbol set to concentrate on, I hit on the zodiac signs as a worthy focus due to their age and complexity. Unfortunately, the only in-depth information I could find on them was in astrology books. So as I began my research, I ended up learning more about astrology, and frankly, I was a bit taken aback at some of its presets. Uh, the sky is divided into 12 parts, and each part has a meaning. I, I had, that was a little much for me to believe at the time. But I felt the zodiac symbols themselves had value, so I put up with astrology to learn more. Eventually, I did get curious. I wanted to see my birth chart, so I calculated it by hand. That's what you had to do back then. And it was pretty interesting. But what really arrested me was when I drew up my parents' charts. My dad had what astrologers would deem a fortunate chart, easygoing, and he was like that. For you astrology, astrologers here, I'll mention just a few key indicators. He had Libra, Sun, Mercury, conjunct Venus, Sun, Tri, Moon, Mars, Sextile, Jupiter. He was well-liked, a hard worker, played the stock market successfully, ran for mayor of even at one point. In other words, the elements in his chart seemed to fit what I knew about him. My mother's chart, on, on the other hand, really startled me. Again, for my fellow astrologers, I can mention her Sagittarian Sun Venus was square Uranus. Moon was very conjunct Mars. Mercury very conjunct Saturn. She was, for the rest of you, you'll understand this, a classic redhead. Explosively emotional, but very smart and very critical. My father and I hid out in the kitchen on more than one occasion. But again, her chart fit her. On the other hand, celebrity charts often did not appear to fit so well. I wasn't persuaded, for example, that you could see Judy Garland's propensity for drug abuse in her, in her chart, or Salvador Dali's chart did not contain the markers I expected to see that would explain his bizarre paintings or his unconventional behavior. Hitler's birth chart, it, it wasn't awful enough. <laughs> But I decided that perhaps I just didn't have the experience I needed to read charts, so I felt I had to keep studying. I thought, 
I'll, I'll watch this for 20 years and maybe then I'll know something. Meanwhile, certain events in my parents' lives did match what astrologers would tell them that were transits to their birth positions, such as when a planet is moving along on the ecliptic and it gets to the spot where your son was when you were born. That's what we're talking about. So my mother wasn't a drinker. She rarely even took an aspirin. So I wondered what could possibly happen when Neptune was approaching her sun position. Neptune represents fantasy, drugs, alcohol, spiritual experiences, escapism. And my mom had no interest in any of these things. But sure enough, mom was taking drugs when Neptune arrived for depression. At that point, she was under a doctor's care seeing a psychiatrist. A little while after that, both Jupiter and Saturn were approaching my dad's Libra sun position. So I wondered what that would do. Jupiter is so fortunate and expansive, and Saturn is the opposite, kind of a downer. When I flew home to visit around that time, my dad met me at the airport, and the first thing he did was take me to meet his new girlfriend. He was still married to the redhead, my mom. Jupiter indeed had him happy and expansive, but Saturn struck soon after when Mom caught him with Jane. The chart for that day when she caught him, by the way, very closely resembled the day Mount St. Helens blew up. So like I said, a lot of times astrology seemed to work just fine, so I continued to watch it.